Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk about tricks. Not GM tricks or player tricks or tricks to making good characters or that type of thing, but tricks in relationship to traps. A lot of times people use them together, tricks and traps. But this can be kind of confusing as what is the difference? And recently on Discord, we were talking about this. I had mentioned that I tend to prefer these days to use more tricks than traps. And it was suggested this might be a good in, good video, and let's see if it is. <laughs> all right, so first of all, I have done a couple of videos on traps. One is just on traps in general, and we talk about the purpose of a trap. And I think that's key here. So let's go over that first. What is the purpose of a trap? Once we know that, we can start to differentiate it from a trick. So a trap's purpose is generally to kill, <laughs> to capture, to delay, to warn, and on some level to kind of uh, to root people around it. And I talk about this in detail in the other video. I'll put a link in the description. The other video about traps, I talk a little bit about tricks in it. And that one I'm more talking about, uh, you know, different types of traps, how you can use traps that are less deadly and effects beyond the kill part of it. So if you're interested in that, again, both videos will be in the show notes. But what's the point of the trick? Well, this might sound obvious, but the point of a trick is to trick. <laughs> trick what, though? Trick players, players, but also player characters, into using resources. Okay, when we think about a trap, we're thinking, who is the, who set the trap? What's the, the reason for the trap? In the trick realm, I tend to think they're best, or I like to use them most, in more of an underworld type thing, where the dungeon itself is alive. And the tricks are often set by the dungeon, but they could have been set by some previous owner or even somebody who's there now. We're trying to trick the players into wasting a resource. So obviously, this is most effective in games that have a lot of resource management. Resources might be time. It might be light source. It might be their encumbrance. It might be rations. It could be spells. It could even be gear if it's the gear is lost or whatever. So the tricks are meant to kind of whittle away at what the player characters are holding. Typically not their hit points in my opinion, but you know, again, it depends on the trick. So the first place I want to take a look at and show you guys is in original Dungeons and Dragons. This is book three, which is uh, the Underworld and Wilderness Adventures. And you could almost think of it as the first DMG. I, I don't know if that's really the way, but let's take a look. Okay, this is in our section on tricks and traps. I'm on my iPad here. Uh, some examples they give of false stairs, either up or down, right? So again, tricking the players. All right, we're going to go down a level, but actually they go up or vice versa, which could be very deadly because in a traditional dungeon, the deeper you go, the more deadly it becomes. Steps which lead to a slanting passage. So you go up and then it slants down or you go down and then it slants up. So again, you are tricked. You think you're one place, but you're somewhere else. The first one seems to be something that would have to be done probably with magic you know, just false stairs where you think you're going one way, but you're actually going another way. The second one is architectural, right? So that could have been there all along. Why? Who knows? We can make that up as we go along. The point is, is that it's real interesting and gives that dwarf the chance to use their detect sloping passages ability. Teleportation areas are mentioned here, which of course are super useful. Sinking rooms, you could also do rising rooms. And it points out specifically rooms that seem to sink, which is another fun thing, right? room, all the doors slam shut in the room. There, It feels like it spins. It feels like it sinks or drops. The characters look around. When they open a the door, they, they don't go out the way they came. Well, did it just spin? Did it sink? Is there an illusion? Who knows what's going on? I mean, you'll know, obviously. The idea is to confuse them. Maybe it actually went up a level and just turned 45 degrees to the right. So now they're going down some passageway, a level above, where they think they fell five levels and they're going to the south. So you can really create kind of a confusion here. And that's part of what a trick does. Again, if you're not running a type of game that has a mapper, or if you're doing VTTs and you're showing everybody the map, then these types might not be as useful to you. Any kind of illusion rooms or mind control rooms or rooms that send you on a quest. I like those kind of rooms. Very cool. Uh, sections which dead end. So here I'd call it more of a trap. Uh, doors with the openable only by one side. I love that. That's one of my favorite things. One-way doors are great. Uh, you can use one-way doors a lot. They're great. You could call them a trap if you want to think about routing people in, but I like them. I like to think of them as tricks. Uh, natural passages and caverns. Those are just tricks to confuse the mapper and space distortion, which I use quite a bit. Space distortion is really fun. 
this is basically you've they look down they see uh, a 300 foot corridor they they walk down it and when they get to the other end there's a door they go through it they think they've gone 300 feet but they've only gone 10 feet right they're just walking super slow or whatever right so it eats up time even though they didn't really get very far or the opposite they think they only went 10 feet and they went 300 and the door locks behind them with that one way door right now they're like okay we got to map our way back they think they've only gone 10 feet but they've gone 300 now they're completely confused as to where they are in fact maybe it not only was a space distortion but it also had a slope right so now they've gone up or down a level and they've gone further over again we're confusing them that's what a trick is and i suppose that this is the right time to say as you have to say in every video a disclaimer don't do this too much unless it's specifically like a trick dungeon that they've been put into. They've been sent to this trick dungeon by this magic user, you know, wizard. He's like, find your way out. Ha 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 ha. It, that's one thing. But if, if you're just using it in a regular dungeon, one of these every once in a while is what you really want to do. Not too much. Now, in my system, I normally use when I do these videos to show you guys kind of how I learned how to play a basic expert or Moldvade basic, uh, more recently rewritten as OSE. Although I don't know if this section's in OSE, it might be, you can tell me in the comments. They have a section on traps and uh, stuff, but they have a section called special, which is the closest thing to tricks. It's not exactly the same, but let's just take a quick look at it. Okay, under special here, see in the corner there, we've got a moaning room or corridor. So sounds can definitely be good tricks, right? It, people are always listening at doors. What's over there? Maybe in a room has the chattering sounds of, of goblin. It's kind of un incoherent. You can't really make it out. What is it? What's making that sound? So they're thinking, oh, there's goblins in here. What are we going to do? Maybe they avoid the room or maybe they charge in there and make a bunch of noise, smash the door down with their weapons making noise and there's nothing in there, right? You do that a couple of times and then people get a little bit, a little more, uh, less careful, let's say, because they're like, oh, it's going to be another trick. And then they get caught by goblins. You can do that. But again, be wary. And think about why it might do that. Is the place, was the place a, a goblin like breeding spot if you do some kind of mythical way the goblins are bred as opposed to, you know, them just being creatures? It, and maybe somehow their their essence is in the walls. Is there some magic item? Maybe their, their magic user created an item that does this to confuse people. There could be lots of reasons why this could be here. And maybe it's even an item that you could pick up and get. You know, maybe it's some kind of like seashell that, you know, when turned up, it, it chatters in goblin, right? And that could be useful. The players could use it later. So some of these tricks can be real fun, right? You just need to have a way. Maybe they can't shut it up. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say they need a way to shut it up, but let them figure that out. Okay, they, they have the rooms, turns and sinks, doors locking, uh, st illusion stairs, uh, a block, uh, stone blocks the way, which I would call a trap. Uh, but again, this is not called tricks, so we got to give them some slack here. Then they talk about talking statues and stuff, all fun stuff. Some of those are tricks, some are not tricks. It depends on what you're doing. So again, I wouldn't call this a great trick section. This is more like, interesting stuff in the dungeon. But interestingly enough, <laughs> going over to the Dungeon Master's Guide, the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a whole section on tricks. And this this could be really useful to get your imagination going. So let's take a quick look at that as well. Okay, this is Appendix H, which is tricks, it talks a little bit about them. And what we get here is features. So altar, art, ceiling, fountain, tapestry, vegetation, love those tapestries. And then we have attributes, right? Moves, rolls, one way, electric shock, enlarges, reduces, shifting, shoots, sliding. So you can use these to kind of put together. It's not, and unfortunately, you can't just roll, although somebody probably has put this together as a chart or you can just write numbers next to it. You can't just roll randomly, but you can look and kind of get, uh, you know, like some ideas like polymorphing, right? Or uh, sliding, sloping, spinning. I'm looking for one that would work like teleporting or something. I love something like a a tapestry, right, that teleports or one that you pull down off the wall because it looks very valuable and it just gets heavier uh, as you carry it closer to the surface of the dungeon. So on level four, where you pick up this tapestry, it, you know, it weighs 500 coins, but as you're carrying it out, it becomes 600 coins, 700 coins, 1,000 coins, and you have to decide whether or not it's worth it to carry it out. And what I would even do there is when they first look at the tapestry, have them evaluate and go, oh, you think this tapestry is worth maybe like a thousand gold pieces? So they're thinking, well, okay, fine. It only weighs 500. It's worth a thousand. But as they're carrying it up, there's a multiplier of the weight. And then if you want to be a mean DM, you could have the value drop, but I would go the opposite and have it go up. And unless they unroll the tapestry again to look at it, they won't realize that. The reason why it's getting heavier is because the gold thread's getting thicker or maybe it's changing to platinum or whatever. So even though it's getting heavier and they're thinking, what is this? We should just leave it because now it weighs, you know, 2,000 coins or 3,000 coins. It's taking multiple people to carry it. When they get it to the surface, it's worth 10,000. 
this is a trick, right? What are they going to do? In a way, the dungeon doesn't want them to steal the treasure. So it's tricking them by making it heavier so that they won't. This is, in my mind, a trick. Other ways you can do things we've talked about, right? One-way doors. I love secret doors that open up into multiple places. There's the kind of pivoting two-way secret door that Gygax uses. Uh, he actually talks about it here in Dungeon Master's Guide, but I've seen it in some modules from other people. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jaquez, Janelle Jaquez has used it. Um, basically, you know, where you have the secret door that if you uh, go through it, it typically goes one-to-one -one place, but, uh, you know, on a low percentage, it actually goes to another place as well. That can kind of be a trick. And maybe the way it goes to another place is via using a magic word or something like that so that people in the dungeon understand that. So in other words, the trick is that it's sending you the not to the treasure. It's sending you somewhere else. Right? You can do all kinds of stuff like this. Think about it as, again, using up resources, confusing, moving people around. That's what the trick does. So there's some examples in here, which I think are kind of interesting. They, To me, they kind of bridge the line between trick and trap, but let's evaluate it and let's take a look for ourselves. Okay, so let's look at this one, pedestal. This short, thick cylinder has six knobs in the shape of flowers. Atop the pedestal lies a strangely wrought crown, but is untouchable due to a force field. Turning the knobs will, one, lower one attribute of the character by one point. Two, give a magical shock or damage. Three, turn the character into gaseous form. Four, deliver a scroll upon which a clue as to how to load the force field. Five, turn the character permanently invisible. Six, open a trap door on the floor which drops all in the room down to a chute to the level below. So again, this one is more like a puzzle trap to me than a trick, but you can see where these lines can blur and why sometimes people just combine the two tricks and traps. But if it was me making the definition, which I am because it's my video, <laughs> traps are meant to kill, capture, delay, route people. Tricks are meant, on the other hand, to confuse, to eat up resources mostly including time, and to make the player characters feel like they've done one thing when they've actually done another. That's effectively what the trick is. The trick could be any number of things, but we want to think like that. And you want to make the characters have to make a choice usually. So they see a, a, a waterfall, right? It's like pouring from the ceiling. They test it with a few things. It's not acid, but they're thinking, do I want to walk through with my armor on? Do I not want to walk through my, with my armor on? And maybe, depending on what they do, different things happen. If you walk through with your armor, fine. You just get wet, you know? But you can always be like, you sure you want to walk through with your armor? <laughs> right? And that's fine. You walk through, you get to the other side. It's wonderful. You strip down, you walk through, you're teleported into some secret space that's loaded with treasure. Why? Who knows? Maybe it's some kind of an ancient uh, rite of passage. It doesn't matter. The idea is that it tricked them. They didn't know what was going to happen unless they made the choice, right? And you can put sculptures of people bathing in it. You could do all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't put it in the same room, but this then becomes more of a, a choice because a lot of times with tricks, you're not going to have a choice. So if you're going to do something more elaborate like this pedestal, I would do something like that where there's a good result and a bad result based on what the player characters do, not just they turn some stuff and take damage. I don't really love that personally. I'd call that more of a trap. Other times they don't get to make a choice, right? It's like they, well, they made a choice to go up the stairs, but it goes the wrong way. They have bad information and they're not always going to know this. You can give them items to help them, you know, give them meaning, put it in the adventure. For instance, if you had a trick where there was a bunch of gold coins that, you know, on fifth level, but then when you went to fourth level, they turned to silver and went to third level, they turned to copper. And when you get to second level or above their lead, so they're basically useless but maybe there's a way you can go or a sack you can put them in or something to that effect or a certain chest that you can carry them in that alleviates that. And if you put those items available to the characters, they can then overcome this trick. Why is all this stuff sitting down here? Well, it's sitting here because nobody wants to carry the gold out. Maybe all that copper or lead coin, maybe they find lead coins on the second level of the dungeon. They're like, what is this? And then once this happens, they realize, oh man, we can go back to the second level and just grab that lead coin, throw it in this chest and carry it up and it'll be gold. And maybe it will be, or maybe not. And that's basically up to you to decide. That kind of weirdness and character choice and figuring things out is really what makes the game fun to me. I'd like to know if you guys use tricks like this. Do you guys do these things? Do you use a lot of traps? Do you use a lot of tricks? Do you not use any of this? Let me know. I'd love to know. Maybe we can have, we can start a running trick thing in the, th the thread, if you will, either in the comments below or maybe over my Discord. 
jump into the show notes. You'll find a link to my Discord. Sign up over there. Join the conversation. Again, you'll find links to my other two videos on traps if you want to see what I was saying there. And finally, you'll find a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel. I'd appreciate that. I'll talk to you soon.